from an aerial dogfighter with epic vibes to a city builder strategy with real-time combat, Thomas Solace's Falconeer series has seen quite the pivot over the years. Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles leans more towards the minimalist side of construction titles. Townscraper and Islanders come to mind, but at a larger scale, which fits the gorgeous yet stark aesthetic and UI, it leans into exploration and potential conquest as much as building up the expanding of your bulwark, though its mechanical depth isn't quite as extensive as the Great Ursi. Set in the same world as the Falconeer, Bulwark occurs some 40 years later. You start as one of three factions, the Free Houses, who favor peace and building, the Imperial Remnant, which remains loyal to the Imperium of the past, and the Manser Order. Each faction has a unique starting location and building aesthetics while relying on different materials for upgrades. After setting up the requisite resource extractors for iron, stone, and wood, you need workers. Build out towers and walkways to ensure a steady flow towards resource nodes near your settlement while ensuring said workers can travel to and fro. Expand this into a proper city and build harbors to transport some resources over larger distances. Hire captains who specialize in ferrying certain materials and establish supply routes. It's all standard city building fare but stripped down and streamlined. While you're encouraged to build indiscriminately, I'm quite proud of my spider web of walkways. There are some limits. Bulwarks are built on sheer mountainous terrain or the Ursi. The latter's depth means that you have limited space for expansion. However, outposts can be upgraded while towers gain multiple floors and assigned commanders, while walkways turn into battlements. However, you're not constrained to a particular faction or playstyle. It's possible to invite other factions, including the Bannerless and the Freebooters, to join your cause. You'll randomly encounter them in their isolated settlements or sailing about and can invite them to your cause. Doing this allows for demolishing and moving their outposts onto your particular bulwark, increasing the allegiances to said faction. Similarly, captains and commanders from different backgrounds can be brought on, with the latter lending some unique units to your survey's battle group. You may even encounter captains with warships who can help secure your supply routes from raids. Resource allocation can get a little confusing at first, since despite all of the walkways, you'll notice your Mansur outposts are getting no access to the stone required for upgrades, while the Bannerless hog them all. The good news is you can demolish and rebuild your bulwark as you see fit, repositioning specific outposts closer to harbors and bringing in certain resources without any material consequences. While I can understand not having different captains sharing trade routes and having to create specific start and end harbors, a shared resource pool for the bulwark would be nice. Eventually, when balancing out the pops of different factions, some tact is necessary. If a particular faction becomes dominant, it can lead to benefits, like arranging trade and peace agreements with the Bannerless in exchange for combat support. You could even invite their settlements to join your cause, eventually unlocking faction leaders with unique bonuses. Different types of surveyors with specific stats suited to speed or warfare also become unlocked. However, other factions won't take kindly to it, and there can be ramifications when assigning captains to routes, with some warships refusing to accompany pirates. Unrest will also start to brew, and you may close any opportunity for peace with other settlements. Of course, being a part of a faction like the Manser Order doesn't guarantee that other alignment settlements will want to deal with you. When courting a Mansur outpost, having them join my cause required a deeper knowledge of the faction. On the bright side, you could also take a more aggressive approach when having other outposts, declaring war and raining down destruction via skull ships and falconeers. This highlights one of the weaker elements of Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles, the combat. All you need to do is hang by near an outpost while your forces automatically batter the enemy into submission. It often comes down to the health and numbers of units, which can be hard to gauge amid battle, outside of notification of losses. Warring sides are indicated by two bars at the top, which dwindle based on who's losing. It's not an indicator for your health. Wander into an active war zone and your surveyor can go down, regardless of how much of the bar remains. You have minimal control over the unit types that join your battle group, and though you can meet wandering ships that replenish their health, how you regain units after losing a conflict is unclear. Hanging around the bulwark or an allied outpost does the trick over time. As overly simplistic as the combat can be, accessing mythic units like a giant seafaring turtle with armaments that can intimidate other faction outposts into surrendering, that's really cool. 
However, once you've provoked the ire of other factions, they won't stop sending warships. The only option left, then, is to venture to each of their cities and force a surrender. Some more diplomatic options would have been appreciated, even if there's a point of no return. Translating a city builder to the controller, even when as streamlined as Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles, can be difficult. While the controls aren't complex, they can be awkward. You don't freely move your surveyor, specifying spots for it to move to instead. If an interactable icon pops up, like building a harbor, outpost, or resource extractor, a single button press is enough. However, this becomes more unwieldy as your bulwark is more developed since it's sometimes all dependent on the position of your cursor. You can switch to the buildings themselves, which is necessary for upgrading them, and extend nodes from outposts to create towers and snap them together intuitively. However, you manually hop from building to building to achieve this, extending your cursor each time and hitting the confirm button. A free cursor for scanning the bulwark would have certainly made things easier. Also, an option to automatically upgrade all walkways into battlements and some details on how some of the unique buildings like surveyors worked would have been nice. Though the gameplay loop can feel simplistic at times, it does shake things up as you fly through the Great Ursi. Encountering random individuals and adding them to your settlement or discovering ambushes and fighting them off. Yet, with how gorgeous the aesthetic can be, especially with different weather and lighting effects, whether it's storms or mists as you sail past like the Shard or Basque in raging volcanoes, it's a shame that the narrative elements and characterization are surface level at best. At least there's a free build mode for those who want to build and create massive bulwarks that are a sight to behold. Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles isn't going to redefine the city builder genre, and for what it's worth, it's not trying to. It delivers a more tightly focused strategy exploration title where expanding, like diplomacy and conquest, are possible at an easily manageable pace. Additional control options and combat information are desperately needed, and it feels like the setting could have offered more beyond its current narrative confines. Yet, as far as city builders go, it's solid, easy on the eyes, and enjoyable to delve into. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.